So as we begin today, since my tenure here, I've always kind of told you personal matters in my life, you know, death of friends, of family, physical ailments, and that kind of thing. So I have a new ailment to share with you today. Uh, last Saturday night, I had this high-pitched sound in my ear, and it wouldn't go away. And so I have kind of looked around and went to the doctor this past week, and I have um, a symptom called tinnitus, and it's where I hear cicadas 24-7. So <laughs> it was funny. I looked it up and I said, um, I Googled and said, who gets tinnitus? And it said, old men. So I guess I have joined the category of old men in my life. So that's just, you know, I do preventive care every day, but this one is a tough one to overcome. We've heard the phrase, there's no use reinventing the wheel. Heard that before? What it means is that in dealing with whatever problem we have, we need not spend time looking for a new solution when a perfectly good one already exists. Consider the statement literally. It implies that the wheel, one of our oldest inventions for moving heavy weights a distance across any surface, works so well that it has not been replaced. Indeed, the wheel has been along for a long time, 5,500 years ago in Mesopotamia. It's found throughout the book of the Bible. Genesis talks about wagons and chariots. Wheeled things were around the time of Jesus and Paul. Jesus' father, earthly father, I believe, was a carpenter, and he probably worked. A big part of his business was on carts and wheels. And so there's no point in reinventing the wheel, but that's not to say that people don't keep trying. The Patent and Trademark Office in Alexandria, Virginia, has received thousands of applications about the wheel. These applications arrive with pages of descriptions, detailed drawings and specs, proposals for plastic bicycle wheels with only three spokes, aluminum car rims toughened by improved welding procedures, and inline skate wheels with tiny brakes inside so that they are activated as the skater tilts their foot in certain positions. Often the goal of the new design is to produce lighter weight wheels that require less material and yield better mileage and improved vehicle handling. The job of the patent office is to determine whether the proposed designs are new and useful and whether they include features that are not already patented. There have been over 30,000 patents for wheels since 1790. None of the applications is for replacing the wheel. Make it from different materials? Yes. Add smoother bearings? Yes. Connect it to the axle differently? Yes. Make it more decorative and attractive in some way? Yes. Use it in conjunction with struts or shock absorbers? Yes. But in the end, the applications all include a circular device that moves itself and whatever is mounted upon it by rolling. Exactly what it did in Mesopotamia 5,500 years ago. Now think about what cannot be obsolete while reading the Ephesians text for today. There's no use in reinventing the wheel. Some 2,000 years ago, Paul filled this section of his letter with practical advice of how to live the Christian life. Paul simply talks about the business of living in a community with other people. Some people call it a moral code, an ethics code, a reconsideration of the Ten Commandments or what Jesus said to love God and neighbor, which is the same. Paul just helps us with how we are called to love our neighbor. These are the wheels we need to mount in our lives. And we're called to help others with our words 
and deeds and actions. So Paul gives us eight ways, and we're going to look at each one briefly. And as we do that, I'll have a little pause between each one and think about how we can live this Christian disciple life in our lives today. The first is this. Speak truth to our neighbors. Speak truth to our neighbors. This is one coin with two sides. One side states that we must stop lying to each other, while the other side of the coin says we must speak the truth in a loving way. Love must be our guide, not our personal aspects of life, but love. We must ask ourselves, what is the most loving way to express the truth? So think about neighbors that we have in our lives, be they in our neighborhood, be who we work with, who we have here in church. And how are we going to speak to persons in truth? The second is this one, and this one comes along, I read in a lot of self-help books, especially for married couples, and it goes like this. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down in your anger. I've read in so many times that it says, you know, don't go to sleep being angry with one another. We must allow our anger, not allow our anger to become sin, because sinful anger is hurt and revenge. And we don't want anger to damage our relationships. The third one, and I was reading some commentaries this week, and they leave this one out, but it's there. Don't make room for the devil. People don't think there's a devil around, but there is. And the thing is about don't let temptation come into our lives. The devil, Satan, is always tempting us to do bad to others and to ourselves. Watch for those temptations in our lives. The fourth one. Work honestly with our own hands to share with others. We share the goods that we have gained through our hard work. We're not called to steal, but to work hard so that we can share with others in need. Sometimes the best thing we can do is to help them. And there are different ways that we do this, providing clothes, food, paying a medical bill. And our income is not only for us, but to serve others. I'll share with you today. So we had our ministry of hope today. And, um, you know, with the summer, people are gone. So we had to scramble to get our team here yesterday to get everything prepped. And so we had 276 uh, bagels, uh, bags of food, and then 300 uh, 300, uh, gift cards. And so we all, yesterday went fine. We got here today, got everything all set. Everybody was uh, coming forth. And, you know, for this particular day, I had so many people say, you know, God bless you to me. Thank you to Doolin Church as you can help me. But what was so funny today was our parking lot, which is the one over here that you use today. There's probably 60 spaces in there. And so we have this onslaught of people that come and then they walk down and they all want to leave the parking lot at the same time. And we have parking attendants there, but still it gets kind of crazy. And I was looking from uh, here, looking down towards Broad Street, and here was this, we had this long crowd of 50, 60 cars trying to get out at the same time. And there was a car on Broad Street that was going to turn left onto Nolan, and they stopped. And they were doing their hand, come on, come on, come on, and all our cars are going through, and there were about 10 cars behind this person. But this fine soul, whoever you are, wherever you are now, thank you, uh, helped us by allowing all these cars to get out on their way to Broad Street. But today, we made a difference in 200, 300 people's lives of helping them in their quest to take care of themselves and to provide a meal and something to eat from the giant. The fifth one, let no evil come out of your mouths, only what is useful for building up. And I have written here, words are not neutral. The words we say are either positive, which means they build up people, 
or they are negative, which tear people down. We must be mindful of the person that we're talking to and how we speak to them. The sixth one. Do not grieve the power of the Holy Spirit. And people say, what does it mean? Do not grieve the power of the Holy Spirit. It means this, you know, the Holy Spirit is part of our lives. Each and every moment, the Holy Spirit is here in this room. The Holy Spirit is here in our lives. The Holy Spirit wants us to live positive, uh, loving ways. And we don't do that when we turn away from what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. Paul is saying the Holy Spirit is grieving. The Holy Spirit has personal aspects in our lives, and the Holy Spirit grieves when we do things that we shouldn't be doing. And that Holy Spirit is always there to move us in the right direction of our journey in life. Number seven, probably a hard one for us, to forgive. You've heard the old thing, it's easy to forgive, but hard to forget. And true forgiveness is when we can put it away, we can put it to the side, and we are done with it. I talk about, I'll leave it with God. And that happens to me all the time. And I just leave it with God and say, God, you take care of this. Take this burden off of my life. And then the last one is this. Walking in love. All that we do should be characterized by love. It includes putting others before us, wanting and working for the best of others, being patient and kind, and hoping and believing in others. I think the best way to do it is in walking in love is to be kind. Two words, be kind. So I hope that we'll look at the ways in our lives of those eight and go back this week and reread uh, Ephesians about what these eight mean, and that the tire is the same. But what happens in the church and with other aspects of life, the tire is the same, but sometimes it gets flat. And so what do we have when it gets flat? But we have one of these, and we just take it, and we pump it up to where it needs to be. There are times in the church where we do something over and over and over just to do it. And we've forgotten its meaningfulness. And it makes the tire get a little flat. There are times when we just don't want to do things. I don't have time for this. We've got other priorities in our lives. And the tire gets a little flat. I think about when we came into COVID, which seems so long ago. But getting into COVID here our tire was nearly flat. What do we do? But through incorporating new ways and new adventures with one another, we've been able to just pump our tire of Doolin Church firmer and firmer and higher and higher and fuller. And we want to do that all the time to make the ministries that we do here impact others in the most meaningful way and not for what we think it should be, but for those that we serve. And that, my friends, is the good news. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we all say together, Amen.